there YouTubers, this is Kevin from The Bat Productions. And today I wanted to make a video kind of going off of some of this stuff that's been really talked about a whole lot from season eight of Game of Thrones. And this is the one that is irritating me beyond belief in this fandom. It's driving me nuts. Frankly, every single time I open up Twitter, I open up Facebook, I even turn on the TV and I see Jimmy Fallon complaining about this. But what okay. was the payoff of him being half Targaryen? <laughs> yeah. No payoff there. No payoff. This is about Jon Snow's heritage and its role in the story. There's a lot of people complaining that Jon Snow's heritage, him being a Targaryen, had no effect on the story. Basically, there was no point to him being a Targaryen. And I'm, I hear this and I go, I don't know what show you watched in season eight to make you come to the conclusion that him being a Targaryen didn't really mean anything. That's just outrageous. Let's go over some of the things that I think make his Targaryen heritage important. Because I genuinely don't think this is a very complicated issue. I think it's very clear cut. If Jon was not a Targaryen, the story would have ended completely differently than it did. So let's give the context to this. We know how season 8 ended. Jon stabbed Daenerys. Daenerys died. They ended up doing this whole democracy thing where Bran became the king. And of course, Daenerys had to die because she burnt down like King's Landing, liberating them. Yeah, Jim Jones thought he was liberating a lot of people in Jonestown too. But obviously, that's not the case. So what were the events that led to all of this stuff happening? Yes, there were some things like Daenerys losing her, two of her dragons and also Daenerys losing Masende. Those are really big things. But some of the biggest things that happened were directly between Jon Snow and Daenerys Targaryen. One of them being, once it was found out that Jon was a Targaryen, Jon did not want to sleep with Daenerys anymore. He still loved her, but he felt wrong about it. And why did he feel wrong about it? Maybe because he was raised as a Stark. If we marry them, they could rule together. She's his aunt. They never stopped a Targaryen before. No, but Jon grew up in Winterfell. He was marrying your Aunt Common in the North. John's just not into that kind of thing, and it was clear when he didn't want to kiss her. I think we saw them kiss maybe twice after knowing about the heritage. The first time he was clearly grossed out about it after, you know, the whole makeout session happened. And then the second time he did it so he could kill Daenerys. When John stopped kissing her, that is when Daenerys figured out that no longer can she really rely on John. Can she not really trust John? And that's coupled with a few things, particularly when John told Sansa and Arya about his heritage. Daenerys knew his heritage was important. Sansa and Arya knew the heritage was important. Tyrion and Varys, when they tried to conspire against Daenerys, knew it was important. Let's make this very clear. If there was no other Targaryen option in the story, Daenerys Targaryen would have been the ruler and would have been pretty much unquestionably the ruler, at least for the foreseeable future. And no, not any person could have been a Targaryen and it would have been okay. That is not true. If Tyrion had been a Targaryen, I, I guess he would have worked, but that's only because he has a lot of history and he's a lot of things that make him a good leader. But let's say Arya was a Targaryen, they wouldn't have put Arya on the throne. It's important that it was Jon Snow because he had a great resume and clearly people loved him. Before they knew he was a Targaryen even, then that's really impressive. So the fact that it was Jon Snow and he was a Targaryen, that was a huge deal in the story. That means that Daenerys wouldn't have gone as mad because she wouldn't have felt rejected by her lover in Jon Snow. That was one of the things that pushed her over the edge. When she realized that he no longer loved her, he said, fine, it will be fear then. And that's when she burned down King's Landing. I don't have love here. All right then. I didn't be fear. If John had just gotten in there and done the deed and made Daenerys think that he was on board, I think that Daenerys would not have burned down King's Landing. She wouldn't have felt isolated. She wouldn't have felt that this was the only way she could get power and keep it at bay. Because there's a good chance, like Varys had said, she may go to kill John later on in the story. We don't know that, but it seems very possible. I mean, everyone brought up how John's heritage was dangerous to Daenerys by the time King's Landing's burning happened. Varys and Tyrion in particular, Tyrion had a long conversation with John about this, that eventually you are going to be a major threat to Daenerys and she will do what she does to threats to you. And that's what made John have to kill Daenerys. Now, I'm not going to say all this stuff about John being a Targaryen is what allowed like him to get past Drogon, to even get into, to see Daenerys. I'm not even going to say it was his Targaryen blood that made him a dragon rider with Rhaegal. The rules on how that stuff works, they're very fast and loose. In the books, if you want to go off of the books when thinking about the show, in the books, being a Targaryen or having Targaryen blood does not get you a dragon. 
That is not a guarantee. Ask Quentin Martel or some of the other Targaryen bastards during A Dance of Dragons. It's just not the case. I'm not going to make the argument that it even had effect on that stuff. Just flat out, if Jon Snow was not a Targaryen, he wouldn't have rejected Daenerys, who wouldn't have burnt down King's Landing and felt really isolated, which wouldn't have led to Jon killing her, which wouldn't have led to this democracy and the wheel officially being broken in Westeros. That's it. There's, there's nothing else to say. It, the ending of the series would have been entirely different if Jon wasn't a Targaryen. That's just flat out. It would, the whole crux and the major events would not have been the same. I don't know what people are saying when they say his Targaryen heritage meant nothing. It meant everything. Tyrion literally said Jon was the most important person in this entire scenario, and he was hinting toward his Targaryen heritage. Does it matter what I do? It matters more than anything. So I know I'm a little charged up about this, but that's because I just can't understand why this stance has been taken by so many people. It's, it's, it's just the epitome of people being really pissed off at the show just because they're pissed off at the show. I don't care that he wasn't Azor Ahai. I don't care that he didn't come out with a flaming sword. We already had a flaming sword in Beric, right? I'm good with how the Battle of Winterfell ended for the most part. It tied up fairly well with the Cat's Paw Dagger. If anyone was going to stab the Night King, it probably would be Arya because she's the one who's trained the best to do it. And mind you, she's probably the best fighter left in the entire series. So it makes sense that she'd be the one to do it. I don't care that Jon wasn't the one to do it. Did I want Jon to have a sword fight with the Night King? Sure. But if he had the sword fight, I think that would have pushed it to the fact that he was Azor Ahai when he really wasn't. Azor Ahai is something that is not guaranteed, folks. We as fans, crazy, crazy fans, have been arguing about who Azor Ahai is for the longest time. And we were never told that Azor Ahai was coming. Never told that there was going to be an Azor Ahai eventually. All we know is that Stannis thinks he's Azor Ahai. Now you can use your context clues from the books and say that there will be one for sure. You can't guarantee that. So no, I don't care that nothing really overt and specific came out of John being a Targaryen, other than, of course, all the stuff I laid out to you already. But it's very clear that how he was as a Targ and how he was as a Stark all encompassed who he is as a person at the end of this series. And it was all important. It was all threatening. All of it was... It, I thought it was well laid out for John, and for the people who think that John got screwed at the end of the series, they're like, I just don't like it because I don't think it's fair to John. Have you met Jon Snow? Nothing is fair to that man. The only thing that ever went his way was that he would not want titles and he'd be given titles. So the fact that he left the series getting boned, that is like John from day one. He constantly gets boned. Even when he doesn't want something and he gets a really cool thing, he still doesn't want it. So he's still getting boned. He just wants to live his life and not be bothered. Like every beautiful woman he has, of course they're an enemy, so he's got to kill them. Or well, he didn't kill Egret, but she died in front of him. He just wanted a sense of belonging. He just wanted a sense of belonging. He didn't ask for titles. He literally joined a order where you lose your titles and your birthright and all that stuff. So I don't care that he went to the Night's Watch and he's going beyond the wall. I think it's a great ending for Jon. So in the end, Jon being a Targaryen meant a hell of a lot to the story. And I think if you don't see that, you're just not willing to hear me out. But that's just my take, everybody. What did you think? Do you think that John being a Targaryen is actually really important to the series? Or do you still think that it's all poppycock and you don't believe anything that I'm saying on this one? Let me know down below in the comment section. I would love to hear your take on this. Also, know that I have some more Game of Thrones Season 8 videos coming up. So, of course, hit the subscribe button so you can see those in the future. Otherwise, hope you have an amazing day, everybody. You take care. Goodbye.